Welcome to Kotlin Bytes. Have you ever wondered what a sealed class is? When I first started to learn Kotlin, it took me forever to grasp when and how to use them. Hopefully, I can take what I learned to help you guys understand a bit quicker. Let's get started. It turns out, sealed classes are incredibly simple. They are so simple, you might be confused as to why they exist in the first place. Sealed classes represent a restricted class hierarchy. As you can see here on my screen, I have a sealed class called shape. I then have three subclasses, none, rectangle, and circle. All three are shapes. Notice none is an object, which is essentially just a singleton. Rectangle and circle are both data classes. These could be standard classes, however I'm using data classes for this example. These subclasses could be defined within the scope of shape or outside of it. However, they must all be defined within the same file. At first glance, this may seem like a simple class inheritance, except it also seems a bit limiting and potentially messy as well. Why not just use a regular class, not sealed ones? Ah, well, this has to do with the keyword in the definition of a sealed class. If you remember, I said that a sealed class represents a restricted class hierarchy. The key benefit of using a sealed class comes when you use the when statement, Kotlin's version of a switch. Let's say I have a general function that takes a shape and calculates its area. Of course, this could be done using objects and overriding an area function. However, this is less of an object-oriented approach and more of a functional implementation. In this situation, we'll be using when as an expression, not a statement. The difference is that an expression returns a result or value, whereas a statement just executes code without returning any result. For when to be used as an expression, it must always return a value. Therefore, all cases must be present within the when expression. Typically, you're required to include an else case to catch anything that might be missed. However, if you use a sealed class, all cases are known during compile time because of its restricted class hierarchy. At this point, sealed classes look a little bit more like enums, except they carry the power of a full class, which is, in this case, the state. Each of the shapes, except for none, have values associated with them that can change during runtime. Because of Kotlin's smart casting system, we can actually pull these values directly out of the shape argument without casting them. As long as our return type to the when expression is the same, we're good to go. Let's test each one of these shapes. Yep, they seem to work. Like I said before, if you don't define shape to be a sealed class, you will need to add an else case within your when expression. The else case is fine in principle, if not messy. However, there is a real advantage to avoiding the else case. For example, if I later decide to add a new shape, let's say a square, I know a square is a rectangle, but bear with me, the compiler does not indicate that we should add the area logic for the square into our when statement. Instead, during runtime, it'll default to our else case, which right now is zero. This could cause bugs in your program and could lead to hours of debugging if you're not careful. But if you're using sealed classes, you are forced to add this implementation before compile time. Otherwise, you'll receive an error. So if you're wondering what is so magical about sealed classes, that's basically it. However, it's a bit more challenging to understand when to use a sealed class. The example I just gave could be argued as a proper or a horrible use of sealed classes. It's really going to depend on your specific use case. In general, consider using sealed classes if you need enums with state. Try to avoid sealed classes that have meaty subclasses. For example, try not to give your classes too many methods. If you need to, keep them limited. And lastly, you can have sealed classes within sealed classes. I would recommend doing this sparingly. However, it is possible. And that's it for this episode of Kotlin Bytes. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and consider subscribing.
The source code and additional resources are, of course, in the description below. If there's anything else you'd like me to explain in a later video, please message me or leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day. See you guys.